for watching. Thanks for listening. If you're not listening, thanks for staring. And this is kind of interesting, speaking of listening. They did a, a study. You know those people who do studies? They did another one. And they found out that only about 2% of conversations end when both people want them to end. <laughs> kind of like sex. Right, Guillermo? Right, Jimmy, right. right, yeah. Researchers at Harvard said that 66% of the people they studied wished their conversation ended before it did. They also found that during a boring story, people say, wow, that's crazy, on average, 28 times per conversation. Wow, that's crazy. Oh. <laughs> How dare you. <laughs> Did you break into your weed stash before the show? A little bit. A little bit, yeah. <laughs> You know, I think the lockdown has spoiled us. It's a lot harder to get out of a conversation when you can't just press a button that says leave. I love pressing leave. Leave and leave on Zoom, my favorite things of 2021. In other unwanted conversation news, a third woman has now come forward with allegations of inappropriate conduct by New York Governor Andrew Cuomo. This one happened at a wedding in 2019. Governor Cuomo approached a woman he'd never met. She said they chatted briefly. He put his hand on her bare lower back, uh, she pulled his hands away, which she thought would be a hint, but he just moved them to her cheeks and asked if he could kiss her. And the craziest part is, there's a photo of it. Very rarely does a wedding photographer capture really anything interesting at all, but <laughs> this one did. That's the photo, and there it is. He's either asking to kiss her, or she's telling her, I know it was you, Fredo, you broke my heart. <laughs> I can't believe they got a picture of it. This is how mysteries in an Olsen twins movie end. This is not how real life goes. And of course, the folks at the New York Post had fun with the picture. Hansy Andy was the headline today. This comes on the heels of two former aides, also young women, who accused the governor of sexual harassment in the workplace. In the span of one month, Andrew Cuomo has somehow done the impossible. He made Bill de Blasio the second most hated politician in New York. <laughs> A year ago, everyone was in love with Andrew Cuomo, like literally in love. Even the items available on Etsy have changed. They went from future Mrs. Cuomo, St. Andrew Cuomo, I'm a Cuomo sexual, <laughs> I'm watching Cuomo the mug, to now they are arrest Cuomo, Andrew the grandma slayer, <laughs> impeach Cuomo and wipe your feet here. You know it's serious when the Etsy community gets involved. Even some Democrats now are calling for Cuomo to resign. Lindsey Graham, this is good. Lindsey Graham told Sean Hannity the Democrats should apply the Republican model to Andrew Cuomo, which I guess means make him president? I don't know. How does that work? <laughs> Another politician who had a great fall is Mitt Romney. Senator Mitt Romney literally fell while playing with his grandkids. He got knocked unconscious over the weekend and had to be hospitalized. The doctors told him, they've told him a million times he shouldn't be skateboarding, but the, the <laughs> dude just loves to thrash, and that's that. The fall was particularly concerning because of all the Republicans in the Senate. Mitt Romney is one of the few who still has some of his spine, so, but he is okay <laughs> and back to work. Hey, you know how... You know how Donald Trump would, um, and his, his cohorts were trying to spread the idea that the rioters who stormed the Capitol were actually Antifa in disguise as his supporters? Well, the director of the FBI testified today before the Senate said there's no evidence of that. Not only that, it's become more obvious that the insurrectionists were reacting to the words of Donald Trump because the majority of them had no connection to each other or extremist groups. They were random people. They studied the arrest records, and research showed, among other things, men who stormed the Capitol outnumbered women who stormed the Capitol six to one, which is why it's so hard to date at these things. And <laughs> it was a real sausage insurrection is what it was, but... But it is kind of sad, you know, these people, not the brightest people, they came to Washington to save America. That's what they thought they were doing. The president told them to save America. They were sold a bill of goods, and now they're paying the price for it. It's like the people who bought Instapots a year ago. <laughs> Investigators have been looking for patterns and connections, and I may have stumbled onto something they can use. At least two of those who were charged list their profession. These are all the people who were charged. Two of them are dating coaches. 
Sam Fisher and Patrick Alonzo Stedman, no relation to Oprah, I'm sure. <laughs> they, I guess, are day coach dating. Uh, Stedman posted a video of himself sitting in Nancy Pelosi's office. He had some good suggestions. One of his suggestions is make a girl think of herself like a piece of meat that you can easily replace with another, which is sweet. And the other guys, also quite the Asanova, he used the name Brad Holiday. He encourages men to hang posters of pinup girls on the wall to keep your mind focused on your goal of becoming successful with women. Yeah, <laughs> uh, let me tell you something about women. They love it when you decorate your apartment like it's a, a middle school treehouse. <laughs> Things seem to be looking up vaccine-wise. President Biden today corrected his original promise that every American who wants one would have access to the vaccine by July. Now he says we're on track to have enough by the end of May. And that is great news, because I, I don't know about you, I haven't been to Lake Havasu in a year. <laughs> now the big challenge is shipping the vaccines and making sure they don't get stolen in transit. You know, there are fears that criminals could pull off some kind of heist, which would be a great plot for the next Robert Pattinson Batman movie. Mr. Freeze deals all the vaccines and no one could do anything because he's the only one who can keep them cold enough to... <laughs> Still high? A little bit, yeah. a little bit, yeah. You know, I mentioned last week there was a, a diplomatic dispute between the U.S. I feel like, you know, like sometimes your kid gets a gerbil and you look over and it's just sitting there looking at you? No, no, I, I'm listening to your conversation. That's what the gerbil says, too. Okay. This will interest you. You know, I mentioned... Remember last week I was talking about how the U.S. State Department, the people in the State Department, the Chinese were putting the Q-tip up their butts for the COVID testing? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So now, you know, China denied it. They claimed that it was some kind of a misunderstanding. But now Japan is asking China to stop doing it to them, too. Apparently, they've been doing it to the Japanese. They say this test has caused great psychological pain to those who are subjected to it. China has now violated so many people, they may have to start running for governor of New York. But, and by the way, I found, I learned this today. I didn't know this. There's a popular prank among Japanese teenagers, something called concho, where they poke a finger into the butt of an unsuspecting person. And it's also popular in Korea, where they even built a statue, I don't know, to celebrate it. But I hope it doesn't come here. You know it's coming here, right? I mean, it's coming here. First we got K-pop, and now we're getting prostate exams on the street. Guillermo, should we be the first Americans to try this? Can, can I think about it? Yes, yeah, so you think about it. <laughs> we could be pioneers, you know. The governor of Texas announced today that he is uh, lifting the statewide mask mandate. As of March 10th, Texans will no longer be required to wear face coverings in public. From there on, the only people wearing masks in Texas will be the Lone Ranger and the Chainsaw Massacre guy, so. <laughs> Meanwhile, the World Health Organization has finally issued a recommendation as to whether or not hydroxychloroquine should be used to prevent or treat COVID-19. And the recommendation is it, it should not. They found that the drug has no meaningful effect on COVID, which is weird because that would mean President Trump was wrong. <laughs> Trump talked a lot about hydroxychloroquine. At, some, at one point, people thought maybe he was selling it. Do you remember that? He talked about it so much, I had to learn to spell hydroxychloroquine. And by the way, when Trump got the coronavirus, you know what he didn't take? Hydroxychloroquine. But this is funny. The state of Oklahoma, after he was talking about it, they're trying now to return $2 million worth of unused doses of this drug, which they bought using taxpayer money to show Donald Trump how very much he means to them. So now the state is stuck with a warehouse full of this malaria medicine. It's, it's medicine for malaria. And now the Oklahoma Board of Tourism is trying to make it some kind of a selling point. Imagine a place that is home to over 200 lakes and has 55,000 miles of shoreline. A place where you can pursue your wildest dreams. A place where 1.2 million unused doses of hydroxychloroquine collect dust in a warehouse. A place where innovators thrive and where we have a ton of unwanted medicine. So whether you're craving excitement and wonder 
or you've got a high-grade fever brought on by African mosquito bites, Oklahoma has it all. Call us today for a free travel guide and call your doctor. If you experience moderate to severe diarrhea as a result of taking all the expired hydroxychloroquine your heart desires, Oklahoma, we got piles and piles of pills. Come eat them. Guide, go check it out. I mean, you know, a lot of, while many of us are still worried about COVID and climate change, Tucker Carlson is worrying on another level. Tucker right now is worried about our testicles. So we spent the last year hearing about a health crisis, a pandemic, but there are a lot of health crises. This may be the biggest one. Falling testosterone levels, which have completely reshaped our society, and falling sperm counts, which may make it impossible to continue the human race. Why is this happening? Probably because of chemicals in our environment. According to one scientist, sperm counts in the Western world have dropped 59% between 1973 and 2011. At this pace, sperm counts will reach zero by 2045. <laughs> wow, that is some math you're doing. Listen, dude, if you need sperm, I can get you sperm. I, you know, I got a guy. Tucker Carlson, he always comes up with something. It, of, of all the sperm in his father's sack, I can't believe he was the fastest one. <laughs> this had to put a dent in old Tuck's nuts. Today, uh, today, in case you don't know, is Dr. Seuss's birthday. Dr. Seuss was born 117 years ago today. And to honor this special day, Dr. Seuss Enterprises announced that six of his books will no longer be published because they contain racist and insensitive imagery. I love that there's something called Dr. Seuss Enterprises. How great would it be to work there, you know? And not only are they pulling some of the books out of print, they're also tweaking some of the books that are in print to make them more inclusive. For instance, we now have the cat in the problematic headdress, how the Grinch appropriated Native American culture, hop on pop with his consent, Horton hears a they, Horton hears a misogynist joke and reports it to HR. There's a wocket in my ethically sourced sustainable pocket. No eggs or ham. That's a vegan thing, I guess. And Yertle the gender fluid turtle. And other stories. This is how Trump gets reelected, by the way. Cancel Dr. Seuss, cancel Abe Lincoln, melt down Mr. Potato Head's private parts and throw them at the Muppets. This is his. Path to victory the next time around. You know, Dr. Seuss's birthday is also Read Across America Day. They came up with this to honor him, but now the NEA wants nothing to do with Dr. Seuss, but they do still want us to read on his birthday. I think, I'm not sure, I don't know. But what I do know is that Americans have been holed up at home for almost a year now, and I wonder how much of that time they spent reading. Not reading Twitter or DMs on Instagram, reading books. So we went out on the street, and we conducted an unscientific survey. We asked people passing by to name a book, any book, on National Reading Day, and this is how that went. Can you name a book? Um, I don't read that much, so. Can you name a book? Uh, oh gosh. I got so many of them on my mind. Um, can you name a book? Geez, on the spot, I can't. Can you name a book? Oh, no, that's a bad one. Uh, what's one of the ones they make you read in high school? Uh, Fahrenheit something, 470 something? <laughs> Can you name a book? Uh, uh, I love food. Is that a book? Yes. What is it about? It's food. What was the last book you read? The last book I read, um, I think it was a comic book. <laughs> I think it was uh, the Infinity Gauntlet series. Is a comic book really a book? I mean, t it has book in the name, so. When was the last time you read a book? Um, not in my college life, ever. <laughs> you went through college not reading a single book? No, no ma'am. What was the last book you read? Um, the last, last book I read was Sometimes God has a kid's face. And when did you read that? Um, I haven't in my, like, well, I, I haven't really read it that much, but, you know, but I'm, I've been, like, reading it, some of it. How high are you right now? Hella high. <laughs>
Yeah, I think Guillermo, I think, I think we found you a friend. Yeah. Thanks for watching. If you liked that video, click the subscribe button. And if you didn't like it, well, you hurt my feelings. <laughs>